Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Today we're doing the P3 Epilogue. I start with Junpei apparently. A few days after the case ends, I'm I was freely uh, feeling kind of like an empty husk. I mean, it had been a while since I've been through anything like that after all. It wasn't just because I felt nostalgic, but well, I remember a lot of different things. Like how didn't I how I didn't understand a lot of stuff back then. Your pitching sucks. Stop throwing like that. My pitching doesn't suck. Your catching sucks. Don't think you're all cool just because you got a good hit the other day. What did you say? I think they said that you suck. As I'm watching the kids practice slash fight, I'm not particularly paying attention uh, paying much attention. Just when I think things are getting peaceful, a squabble starts up. Well, it's a coach's job to settle things like this. Hey, break it up. What's going on here? Stay out of this, Junpei. Coach Junpei, right? So, what's up? He blames me because he can't catch. It's because you got no control. Everybody knows it. The other kids all stop practicing and gather around the argument. These kids have way too much energy and get into fights frequently, so I need to med uh, mediate this conflict in a mature, dignified way in order to, to be a good example. Children pick up on that kind of stuff, you know. Hey, listen up. The most important thing in baseball is teamwork. No matter how good you might be alone, you'll never win a game by yourself. You can't play baseball if you're the only one on the field, right? Of course not. Right, well that's just common sense. But if you keep putting the blame on other people, you're going to end up all alone eventually. <sighs> if you think the pitcher has no control, then you got to try to work hard to catch anything, no matter what he throws your way. Or, you know, the pitch could also try to get some control, too. And if you think the catcher blows meaty yeah, chunks, I'm gonna say, try throwing balls that even the worst catcher Blows can. meaty chunks. What? <sighs> if you both practice together like that, then everyone gets better, and the entire <clears throat> team gets stronger. Isn't that right? Yeah, that was awesome. Go me! I wonder if these guys will ever look back on these days and think that they never understood what was going on. I bet they will, just like me. I gave them a good talking to, and this was a great place to end for today, so I call today's practice over. As everyone says goodbye and goes their separate ways, one of the kids doesn't leave. Is that Goro? Uh, Goro? Goro? I have no idea. Goro. It's Goro. Let's just say Goro, right? Pretend he's has uh, like he's eight foot tall with four arms and like a ponytail. He looks more humble than usual. Uh, it's not. It's not overlooking slight changes in your players like this that makes you a great coach. Hey, aren't you going home? Junpei, do you have a girlfriend? What? What? What's he asking me that all of a sudden for? Jeez, kids these days. Yeah, I didn't think so. Rough. Hey, what's with the attitude? That's really rude, you know. There's a girl I like, but she's gonna move away. I didn't know, and we got in a fight. A fight? I thought we'd make up like we always do. Even when we get in fights, things always go back to normal in a few days. But when I heard she was transferring to another school, I got worried about what would happen if I couldn't make up with her. Eh, that sort of stuff does suck as a kid. <laughs> well, the answer here is Actually, it sucks as an adult yeah, too, but and apologize to her. It doesn't matter if it's usually more mature to deal with it. Fix everything. That's so lame. I can't do that. Lame, not lame. Is that your problem here? This isn't the time to care about looking cool. Not when it involves something you care about. If you and her end up going separate ways without telling her how you really feel, gonna regret it for a long long time this is true but what if we get in another fight guru drops his eyes again well that's this kid's bad habit he acts all tough but when things matter most his timid side comes out aren't you the team's cleanup hitter you've got you gotta strengthen your resolve i guess i better do the coach thing and encourage him but the way gore is hanging his head makes me a little uncomfortable deep down why? Because my own words are coming back to haunt me. Regretting not telling someone your feelings before you have to part, huh? Yeah, that grand slam I whacked in my dream, I can still feel it in my hands. And I got up on the platform for the MVP interview, but that time is ended before I could say it. But this time, when I still haven't answered his question, Goro peers into my face. Oh well, guess I need to strengthen my own resolve. 
I look at the empty outfield and picture myself in that dream. If you get a hit, you'll be a hero. Are you gonna try for a grand slam? Goro seems dazed for a second at my sudden enthusiasm, but his clouded face quickly breaks out into a bright smile and his old tough self again. Oh, and he's his own tell self again. All right, I'll go do it. Goro's going for a grand slam with his girlfriend, huh? I don't know if I should call him optimistic or if he doesn't really know, or if he doesn't really know what he's talking about. But at least it looks like I got through to him. In which case, I think it's time the ace slugger swings for the fences too. All right. After high five Goro, I grab myself and run for the station. This time I won't oversleep. I'm still not really sure if Tajori's alive or not. <laughs> in, in this, it's kind of getting mixed signals. Because right there, it sounded like he was going to go propose to her. I don't know. And maybe that was just my interpretation. But then again, it also said like he didn't have a girlfriend, maybe. I don't know. He did. He was about to propose to her in his dreams, and you don't really do that to a dead girl. But still, anyways, the view from the pair matches an old memory of mine. The cloud, color of sky, the ocean, the sound of waves. This is the first time in years I've come back to this place. Whoa, this brings back memories. How long has it been since we were here? We were second years in high school, wasn't it? It would be three years ago. It was the summer of 2009. Only three years, huh? It feels more like ten. <laughs> no trauma does age, people. What's happened since then? I see. Now that I think about it, you haven't returned to Yakushima since then either. We leave the beach and follow a woodland path. The virgin forest is filled with lush greenery and the virgin forest? And the air is cool and clean. What does that mean? We're headed to the remains of the ergonomics research lab. You want to go to Yakushima? Yeah. Yes, if possible that is. I don't believe there's anything left there aside from warehouses, though. Yes, I understand that. I guess I have no intention of preventing you from going there. But may I ask why? Maybe the look for a dog? Like we should have done years ago? I have wanted to go back for a while now. That was when my sister's case began. So I thought that now would be a good opportunity. I wanted to see for myself what led to my birth. Hmm, I think it's a good idea. Yukari-san. Isn't it normal to want to know about things like that? We're talking about your roots here. I see. I like how Yukari's wearing a normal outfit. But here's Mitsuru, full of leather still. Actually, I was just thinking about taking a vacation too. That battle from the other day was a lot more grueling than I imagined it would be. As Yukari-san says, it truly was a fierce battle. Because I was severely damaged, my maintenance had to go on for a good deal longer than usual, and I spent a long time in my repair bay. That's why I'd been longing to feel the light of the sun. I'm unsure if Yukari-san knows that I feel this way, but she smiles. Hey, I guess, why don't we go together? And it'd be nice if we could stay at your summer house, like we went to before, Mitsuru-senpai. Though Mitsuru-san smiles knowingly, she readily agrees to our request. The last time we lived together was back when we were roommates during our third year of high school. You're right. Oh, that's right. At the end of the answer, you guys were, like, moving in together, right? That brings back memories. I told you to stop being so overly polite because it made you stick out in class. And yet, you never did. As they're passing through the forest, we reach a desolate area with debris scattered around. Oh, this is the door that Labyrinth broke, right? Could this have been the outer wall that surrounded the research site? The entire thing has collapsed and has been overtaken by wild plant growth. So this is the place. I correlate what I see with the data about the site, and I confirm that this place is where the combat testing ground had, be had been. We pass through where the gates had been and proceed further inside. <laughs> Yo, no way, is the dog actually alive? We walk through the facility for a while and an old white dog runs up to us and barks. I feel as if this dog isn't barking at us to warn us or frighten us away, but it's more welcoming us, greeting us. A dog? 
I try to match the dog to the data I have regarding Yasuga, uh, y Yakushima. Car for singing appearance, the attempting to match vocal rec Snowy? records. Huh? Do you know this story? How is the dog still alive? No, not as such. Where's Labyrinth? Or Labyrinth. Labyrinth. I quickly find a record of this dog. There is no doubt that this dog is Snowy, the same animal that my sister made friends with. He's still okay after all these years. He appears to be the dog my sister became attached to in the past. It seems he can tell that I'm like her. Huh? Snowy wags his tail and comes over to happily nuzzle me. He appears to be welcoming me, though he we never actually met before. I can't communicate clearly with him the way I can with Koromara son. Still, his actions are easy enough to understand. I crouch down and gently pet him. It would appear that this place and what happened here are part of my own roots after all. What do you mean? In the past, I thought that my ability to communicate with animals was just something that I could do. It didn't seem like the people at the lab had deciphered dog language, and even then, I doubted that such an ability was necessary for a weapon. I had thought it mysterious that I was capable of doing so, but it seems that my sister can do the same thing. Huh. So are you saying that you inherited that function from Labyrinth? It's not really a function, per se. And she in turn got it from, like, was was it 24? I think it's 24. I stop petting Snowy and stand up before taking a sweeping look around the area. Piles of debris, both large and small, are scattered about. The early summer sun shines down upon it's us. It's probably something that was slowly nurtured among the fifth generation units that were housed here. Behavioral traits, like having interest in things besides missions, get passed on. And then, interest in animals. And then, the ability to communicate. I see. After a long time, <laughs> Kari's just like, I'm just gonna say I see, because I actually have no idea. My gained that ability, and I, in turn, gained it from her. The reason I have a special rapport with dogs, out of all animals, is most likely because of that process. Wow, that's pretty deep. <laughs> if it goes that far, then you're right. It's not just some function that you were intended to have. It's more like a wish. Yes. I crouch down once more and pet Snowy again for a while. After that, I begin clearing away the mossy rubble that had been left unattended for so long. Oh. Snowy happily runs around the area that had been cleared for uh, cleared of the rubble. Still, for the ones before Labyrinth who had hearts or wishes, it might be a bit sad that this place is left like this. Just as Yukari-san says, the carelessly uh, carelessly scattered rubble under this clear, beautiful sky only emphasizes the loneliness of this place. Snowy barks once and runs through a small hole in a passage blocked by debris, then barks again as if uh, motioning to us to follow him. We see a shimmering yellow-green light shining through the hole he had passed huh? through. What's that? I move aside more debris to make a hole large enough for a person to pass through. What we find on the other side is... super pretty here what is this place there's a tall a cylindrical structure that looks like a greenhouse that reaches high above us it seems this area was once indoors but the ceilings have long since collapsed and this structure stands directly under the blue sky the clear cylinder has literally uh, literally acted as a greenhouse allowing the area inside the grow lush green grass trees and vibrant flowers even birds and butterfly flit uh, about inside this place is something like a paradise out of a children's book but these are the remains of the anti-shock chamber where Labrys and the other units of her model had undergone battle tests there are many plants here that only grow far to the south of this latitude this building's windows seem to have coincidentally formed a greenhouse. I take a closer look around and notice a large sword stuck into the ground in the center of the room. The unit that used the sword is thought to have been destroyed, but the sword remains here, unchanged. The number 024 it was 24. To this. It may have belonged to a unit that fought here. Oh, I see. It's kind of hard to believe that this place was once such a nightmare. 
Once such a nightmare, as far back as my memories go, it's not wrong to say that this place was just as Yukari-san described it. And the way this room is now, it may be a fitting tribute to my sisters who fell here within this very chamber. The large blade here is more than half covered with a soft green moss, and small birds are using it as a perch. Hey, I guess. Let's ask Mitsuru Senpai to keep this place like it is. Yukari-san. And why don't we bring everyone else here from time to time? Let's bring Labras next time, too. Yes, is he snowy? Don't wait too long, though. That dog's probably, like, extremely old. I nod. My power is your power. That's why I'll never forget you all. As the last of the anti-shadow suppression weapons, I will fulfill my duty to protect my companions and my sister, protect humanity, and create a future with your memories within me. I'm glad I came here. I feel happiness in the depths of my heart, and take a step forward. I raise my voice as loud as I can so it echoes through this entire chamber. Everyone, thank you. The chirping of the birds and the sound of the waves echoes, echoes on forever. But who's next? Ken, Akihiko, I'm assuming Labyrinth is going to be last. But they did you first, didn't they? A few days after the case was resolved, I stand above a gravesite. The marker is still new and clean. We finally met. I'm sorry. Oh, so it's just so Labras now. Some of my memories are are, are the uh, some of my memories are are those from another machine like me, Unit Twenty Four. She and I were in the same production generation. Some of those memories are of are, are of a girl. When Suresan and her people aided me in finding that girl and finding out who she is, the first word in her records after her name. Deceased. Mitsuru-san was apologetic when she told me about it, but I wasn't surprised. The girl in my memory had been in a hospital room. That's why, in my heart, I was kind of expecting things to turn out this way. You know, there's a bunch of stuff I wanted to say, and I don't know where to start now. But, thanks so much for giving me life. I mean, I guess this epilogue is just going to be all about the fail train. No words come back to me from the gravestone. I didn't make it in time. I have a younger sister, and I've got companions and friends, too. Because you wished for it. I have a happy life now. But there's nothing I can do to repay you. Mommy, there's someone here. As I was standing still, a boy approaches me and looks up at me with curiosity. A woman, apparently his mother, follows him and bows to me. She's holding a bouquet of flowers. It seems this family has come to visit this girl's grave. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, um, this girl's family? Oh no, it's just my boy has the same illness as the girl who's here. Uh, I look at the boy. He seems thin, but he otherwise doesn't appear to be in poor health. The hell. girl here agreed to submit to a great many examinations when she was young. Because of that, the doctors learned a great deal about her disease. And it's thanks to her sacrifice that my little boy is still alive today. He can even go to school. She tells me more about her son and then explains that they come to visit the girl's grave to thank her. After they lay the bouquet on the grave, the boy and his mother stand silently for a moment. When they leave, I'm alone in front of the grave once more. She dreamed of being useful to the world, and that wish has come true. I know she would have wanted to see the results of how she helped people, but in the end, she never could. Then I, then I've... I've found something I can do. Hey, can I call your mom? I will carry on your dream, my mother, and protect the world where all the lives you saved reside. Just as you wish for my happiness, I will wish for the happiness of all the humans, and we will and we'll do what I can to protect them. I will do it in the best way I can as a shadow operative. Oh, that was really short for her. I mean, I guess they all can't be long, but I kind of figure since she's not the main character, but like a this focal character. This is a spectacular feat. We've never had a second year student receive the award for best paper at this school. Good for you. But uh, yeah, she's I guess she's like sharing the spotlight with like you and stuff like that. So I kind of figured it'd be a little bit longer. Um, thank you. 
I received an urgent summons from my lab at college and found my professor there openly praising me. You're already getting recruitment calls from labs and corporations, but I'd recommend that you devote yourself to studying abroad. Uh, abroad, you say? I just happen to be friends with a professor who's searching for an assistant. If you wish, I can write you a letter of recommendation at once. I hesitate a bit on how to respond to my professor's cheerful words. Ever since I entered the engineering department, th things have become awkward with my parents. Though they still look pained when the subject of my not entering medical school comes up, perhaps they'll be impressed with me if I tell them that I'm going to study abroad at a famous college overseas. But even if I were to leave Japan, if something were to happen to Mitsuru-san and the others, I'd show no hesitation in coming back here. Even if it wasn't for a case involving shadows, for example, if I was told that they didn't have anyone they trusted to perform Aegis or Libris' maintenance, I'd still feel the same. I have no intention of actually joining the Shadow Operatives, but I want to help out as much as I can until the organization's foundation becomes more secure. I'm not afraid of moving away from them, but I, considering what Mitsuru-san is trying to accomplish, there are a lot of things that I can't help with if I'm too far away, and... How about it, Miss Yamagishi? Do it! I'm sorry, but I'll have to decline for now. If the time comes when I feel a need to study abroad, I'd like to ask for your assistance then. Yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> then I'll contact them at once and... Wait, you decline? <laughs> oh, just do it, Fuga! Oh no! Classes are about to start. Please excuse me. Thank you for telling me about this. Miss Yamagishi, wait! Hey! Oh, that poor professor. I'm not staying here because I'm needed, I'm staying because I choose to do so. That's more important than taking a course that someone else has prepared for me. I can study wherever I want, after all. I mean, I think it's a little more than that, but you, to each their own, right? You do what you have to do. It is a good opportunity. I joined the flow of students moving from class to class and hurry to my next class. Okay, that was actually shorter than Libris's. So Akihiko, Ken, and Mitsuru. Oh, and Yukari. So this is Ken. The early summer weather in Gekokan's schoolyard is refreshing after school. We're, abs we're absorbed in chasing the ball like always. Not gonna happen. Whoa. One of the players I'm guarding against goes flying and the game stops. Crap, did I get a little too rough? I rush over and see how he's doing. Sorry, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. It wasn't a foul. That was a great tackle, Ken. You've been on fire lately. Luckily, he doesn't seem hurt. I relax and grab his hand to pull him up with a smile. Well, we do have a match coming up soon. Isn't our opponent supposed to be a strong team? Yeah, you're right. All right, let's all put some more effort into this. Once more! Keep our spirits up! Yeah! Woo spirits! The sun has almost set and it's almost time to end our club activities. I look around the school uh, school ground at the, at the students leaving their own clubs. I can tell they're looking at someone standing in the corner of the schoolyard. Oh man! I didn't think she'd come here wearing that battle outfit of hers. I guess I should have given more thought about where I suggested that we meet up. Those... Poor kids going through puberty. I regret choosing this place a little, but she'd stand out anywhere. Guess uh, anywhere. I guess it can't be helped. I'm the one who called Mitsuru-san here, and this is the first time I've seen her in person since that case ended. I'm well aware of how busy Mitsuru-san is, but I implored I implored her to come here today. I'm starting to feel a little unusually nervous, but I make up my mind to t take a few deep breaths before approaching her. Tell me she's Ken Kun's girlfriend. No, that's highly illegal. What? No way. I'm so shocked. What? Oh my god. A little serious, though? Oh, absolutely serious. Mitsuru san, thank you for coming all this way when you're so busy. Don't worry about it. I am currently on a mission now, so I don't have a lot of time. I would like to speak with you for longer someday. Oh, it's all right. This won't take long. I called you here so I could give you this today. This. I hand her a small silver badge. It's the official identification given to members of the Shadow Operatives. When she sees it, Mitsuru-san briefly looks surprised. 
She looks from the badge to my face, then swallows whatever she was about to say. I'd like you to take it back for now. I don't need it. I promise I'll come get it again one day. Very well. I will keep this for you. That's right. I don't need it right now. Mitsuru-san accepts it without another word, but I bet she respects my decision. Mitsuru-san's always thinking about us. I'm sure that my action speaks louder than anything I could have said to her, and she understands perfectly. This is how it should be. Thank you, Mitsuru-san. Hey, kid! Let's get going! A voice suddenly calls out to me from the school gate and breaks the silence between us. I look at, in that direction and see the rest of my soccer club, who have finished changing and are waiting there for me. I, it should be obvious that I'm in the middle of a serious conversation here, but that doesn't stop them. Well, I guess it can't be helped that they want me to hurry up. Uh, we just finished this practice and we're all hungry kids. It's only natural that their stomachs are growling. I mean, mine is too. Okay, race in a wild duck! Class from their face! Well, I have to go. I hope you stay well until I see you again, Mitsuru-san. In any case, since the burdens of my shoulders have been have, since the burdens of my shoulders have been lifted, I quickly bowed to Mitsuru-san before rushing off with my school uh, soccer club. We still have the after practice wild dash to do. It's a famous tradition at the GeckoCon Junior High Soccer Club. Then again, we started this tradition on our own. We consider it our uh, one last part of our practice, so I can't allow myself to lose here either. Huh? He left. But wow, don't you think Kenkun's changed a bit lately? Really? Like how? For real? He used to be all, I don't know, cold? But lately, he's been in high spirits. It's like he learned how to be normal, right? I think he did learn how to be normal. You're right. He does seem to act more naturally than before. I like it. Three years ago, we forged a bond through our long and severe battles. That bond is still very important to me. But if I let myself get too caught up in that bond, I'll end up missing out on things in my own life. I think I was able to change because I realized that. I sense that my bond with the others have remained unchanged, but more than that, I sense that I've grown in my in myself as well, even if only a little. Uh, what's best for me right now is to spend my days doing what I can without rushing through life. That's good, that's smart. I don't know if I would have given the badge back, but I don't know. It seemed to come in handy last time, and if I was Ken, I'd still want to help if something well, something like what happened there came up, right? But it is his own life, and it is his decision to choose how to live it, though. And he should be a kid, for the most part. Uh, what happens to me now will surely affect my future. That's what I've come to realize. And acting that way will be my way of fulfilling the duty that was left to me. Oh, and Kormar is here, too. Kormar appears from the side street and ma magnif magnificently runs past us. Kermar has been showing up late like this from time to time and racing us to the burger place. I remember thinking that this, this during the recent battles, but even though Kermar is quite old, he sure doesn't seem that way. Yeah, he's gotta be up there, right? That's sad. I that is actually really sad. I bet he just he's determined not to let us let us kids beat him either. Well, if he's challenging me, I can't just let him win without a fight. I pick up the pace and chase after him. I chase out the white furry shape ahead of me. So we're we gonna cut to Akihiko fighting bears. Target acquired. Commencing capture now. I guess. I thought I was well concealed in the crowd in front of the station, but I guess comes charging towards me. You're actually wearing normal. Yo, Akihiko, you look actually good in that. Stop wearing a goddamn cape. The people around me draw back, and people walking by stare dumbfounded. Not again. It's time for your English two class. I, uh, I'm going to be absent today. Absence without Mitsuru-san's express permission will not be tolerated. What? Well, the class doesn't do roll call. If I pass the final exam, I'll get the credits I need. I've already mastered English anyway. I've heard that some college classes randomly take roll. One cannot discount the possibility. <laughs> With that, professor, it'll never happen. You stand out, so your absence will immediately be apparent. How do I stand out? Have you looked in the mirror? Today? In any case, you still stand you out, must dog. Prioritize your studies. 
After the case had closed, I went back to college, even though I had been taking time off to go on my training journey until recently. Though Mitsuru, saw, Mitsuru had a hand in getting me back, getting me to go back, annoyingly, I mean thankfully, I guess has taken upon herself to manage my college credits, which has led to this situation like this. Uh, the moment I go off her radar, she suddenly shows up out of nowhere and drags me back to class. My attendance, classwork, and study groups, assignments, submissions, and exams, she has total control over my every move, and I don't even have time to train anymore. Stop being so persistent, I guess. I told you, I have plans today. You are the same as always, aren't you? You both stand out a lot. <laughs> Kurosawa-san. You're alive! Kurosawa-san appears out of the crowd with a resigned expression. Yeah, I was here to meet him here today. Uh, he currently He's currently a detective with the Metropolitan Police Department and is a trustworthy man who had been helping us in, a sec in secret. Even now, he caught on to the Public Safety Department even now, he caught on to the public safety department's mo moves before anyone else and was able to warn us. I wasn't told that you had class today. Should we postpone? Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> Let go, I guess. I see. So your plan was to meet with Kurosawa-san? Yeah. I have something important I need to consult with him on. That actually seems to be the case for once. I don't have much time to spare either, so why don't you hand him over to me for today, I guess? If that is the case, then I understand. I will await your report later. Aya says so politely uh, as she releases my arm and salutes Karasara-san. Uh, with that, she disappears back into the crowd. I swear, she's been a pest lately on purpose and enjoys seeing my reactions. Oh well, I guess that means she's getting even more human-like. So, what did you want my help with? Well... This might be a bit late to ask, but I want to have enough power in the police to protect the others from the outside. So that's what this is about. Dealing with people from that side of the business is more trouble than fighting shadows sometimes, you know. Oh, I know. That's why I need power besides what I can do with my fists. So you should go to school. Kurosawa-san smirks and responds. I like the look on your face. That reminds me, you're old enough to drink now, aren't you? Well, yes. What's this? You don't like alcohol? No. Alcohol and protein shakes go surprisingly well together. That does not sound like it would go surprisingly well at all. Uh, drinking with you is going to be tiring for a different reason. Kurosawa-san looks amused for a moment, then turns and walks away. I follow him into the city. No, protein makes an... Alcohol? Oh, no. Ugh, mm, no. Just no. Mitsuru Senpai and I are walking through the city, which has suddenly become filled with summer fashions as long as, as the long holiday draws to a close. Uh, we've been going out together like this for a while, but when she wears clothes more pro more appropriate for her age, Mitsuru Senpai looks even better than mo uh, than models. Heads turn to follow her whenever she or wherever she goes. Masuru Senpai doesn't seem phased by this, though it's more likely that she doesn't even have a clue that she's standing out. It's a mystery how to, to me how she doesn't notice that. The only thing that appears to bother her is how she's walking. I'm not comfortable in these clothes. Come on, you look ah, looks so normal. And you know what they say when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Yeah, not wear full body leather. But doesn't such a frilly skirt interfere with how you walk? Huh? Senpai, I know you wore a skirt as part of the Gekukan High uniform. A uniform is fine since it's like battle attire. What? Uh, battle attire, huh? Hey ladies, how's it going? Are the two of you looking for a good time? Why don't you join us and have some fun? Would you mind getting out of the way? I'm trying to enjoy my day off with my friend. Blunt. Uh, again? I mean, yeah, she stands out, but how many times have we been hit on just today? Well, if not today, how about another time? Can I get your phone number? Maybe we could go out sometime. Oh. The man hitting on us touches my shoulder. This guy either has guts or he's really slow on the uptake. Either way, this isn't good at all. Mitsuru Senpai's arm flashes out like a snake and grabs the man's wrist. Mitsuru Senpai, hold on! No, break it! Ow! And then walk away! I'd prefer it if you kept your hands off my friend. I also believe it to be in your best interests if you left at once. 
I'm okay. Geez, you guys better get going. Oh, crap. Oh, crap! We're sorry! The guys who talk to us are scared off by Mitsuru Senpai, and they run for their lives. I'm happy that she protected me, but it's like she's seriously turning into an empress. That's fitting. Uh, she's the head of a special battle unit with the mission of exterminating shadows. I wonder if that environment is what's making things worse for her after all. I really need to help her have some time to enjoy herself. Senpai, let's go over there. I take Mitsuru Senpai's arm and charge into a shopping mall. I'm pretty sure that guys like that won't follow us all the way into a store. After checking out some clothes and some other and other accessories like normal girls in, in these busy holiday stores, we decide to take a break at a cafe terrace. <sighs> that was fun. Especially when you broke that guy's hand. You're right. I relax and enjoy the fun we had and take another sip of my iced coffee. Mitsuru Senpai answered me absentmindedly, and her tea is left untouched. Senpai, you promised that you wouldn't think about the other day. Yukari. I know that it's impossible to keep it from getting into, getting to her. After all, the case this time was all because of Karijo Group's negative legacy. Mitsuru Senpai had taken on the role of the leader of the Karijo family to atone for her family's past, and yet, after being captured by the enemy, she couldn't take command of the situation. It may only be natural that she feels responsible for what happened, but even then, I can't be convinced that she needs to bear the weight of all that herself. There are so many people here. And there she goes again. I came here today thinking about giving her a piece of my mind. She keeps taking responsibility for everything on herself and worrying about the things on, uh, things all on her own. Still, I can't bring myself to say anything about it when I see the look on her face. I thought that maybe confronting her emotionally like I had back then would lessen this distance between us, but that would just be repeating what I've done before. Doing so would be saddening. I mean, we're best friends, you know? As I try and figure out what to say next, all I hear is the bustle of the busy cafe. See? It's Feather Pink! Wow, you're right! It's Reiko Kuchakuin! Hey, Feather Pink! We're Red and the others! Uh -huh. Oh, is that her stage name? Suddenly, a little boy points at me. Everyone turns around to, at his shout, and the children walking past me make a wide circle around us. No, uh, you're mistaken. You've got the wrong person. I hardly wave my hand in an attempt to disperse the crowd. <sighs> Having a... Actually, you know what? This reminds me of something when I used to work way back in the day. I, uh, I used to work at retail, and I was uh, helping a customer out. Uh, getting something into their car and this little boy come up and he said I looked like uh, He asked me if I was the yellow ranger because I guess I looked like him or something like that uh, I don't know what from Power Ranger Episode was I think it was yellow ranger anyways he, his mother was there and he came up to me all shy and asked if I was this person for the Power Rangers I just went along with it just to make the little kid happy, but it, it was actually extremely adorable I forget how old the kid it was I, I kind of wish I remembered exactly what Power Ranger he said I was so I could look it up again. Because I don't know. I kind of look like freaking Samwise from Lord of the Rings, so... Whatever Power Ranger looks like that. Anyways, having a role that shows my face can be really inconvenient. You're quite popular, Yukari. How does it feel to be a hero? Huh? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess it's worth it since these kids are really into it. Death must not be needlessly feared. But it must not be needlessly desired as well. Face it and fight, Featherman. Or so the line goes. Senpai, why do you know that? That's the opening line of the intro to Featherman Victory. That catchphrase comes up in every episode of the show. I may be busy, but I still have time to watch a little television. What? But why would you watch Featherman of all things? Oh, she's a closet fan. Why wouldn't I? My best friend is one of the stars. Uh, I had never seen such a program before, but it's true. I did sense something from it. I feel that you were trying to help people, especially children, teaching them to avoid bringing harm into their lives. That's... well, I guess that's how it is. The protagonists of the hero shows don't show... don't just punish evil. They protect those who are precious to them and give everyone the hope to live. I'm sure that these shows teach a lot of things to children, too. The same goes for Akihiko and Yamagishi, Aiga, Samara, and Miyori as well. Every one of us is proceeding down their own path, in their own way. 
That's how I can concentrate on my own duties. The trust we formed will not easily be swayed. Isn't that right? I can't help but sigh. I feel like I've been beaten instead. My best friend believes in me and is watching over me. Well, I should do the same to her, even though I get the feeling that I got sweet talk somehow. Okay. What's the matter? I guess I've been defeated today. Well, that's fine. Let's go to the next place. Next place? You want to continue shopping? Well, I don't have any idea when you'll be able to make time for me again, you know. What if I promise to contact you every once in a while? Would that do? <laughs> it's a deal. But while we're here... <laughs> I keep counting us in the back. Uh, I tug on Mr. Senpai and we resume our shopping. I'm sh not sure why, but I feel as if whatever had been bothering me had disappeared. Who's left? Even before we could complete the follow-up investigation of the case that Minazaki caused, I was summoned by the public safety to govern to the government office building. I would have liked to ignore this meeting, which is sure to be nothing more than interrogation, but it's better that I go for it's better that I go than for them to go get their hands on Labrador Minazaki. Uh, how also I want to make sure that no trouble comes to Yukari or Amada. As Daily's lies. Oh, it's Mitsuru. Your achievement in recovering Labrys. Wasn't it your own blunder that led to you, the leader of your organization, being captured? There are also reports that you involved underage civilians in this matter as well. What do you think your organization is? If there were people there, then they must have acted on their own to protect their town and their companions. Also, with regard to the members of the auxiliary staff, the emergency suppression unit. They became concerned for me after my disappearance and came after me as individuals. That is all. It is absolutely unrelated to the Shadow Operatives. You're just playing semantics. Furthermore, That's what you gotta do when sometimes. the case occurred, the Shadow Operatives were forced to begin an investigation based on a lack of evidence. Since you were the ones who ordered the investigation, I believe you would know whether or not they were able to go on duty or not. Mm. Also, even though it may have been merely an intimidation tactic, I received a report that my people were fired upon during the incident. Yeah, that's messed up. I laughed it off at the time since it's impossible that this organization could have been so stupid as to send my people into danger unprepared. You little. But as you pointed out, it was due to my own lack of preparedness that I was captured by the enemy. I will accept any kind of punishment for that. The report says that your capture was nothing but a ruse, though? Excuse me. What is it? We're in the middle of an inquiry. Oh, that's the guy here. from Nauto's story, right? I was ordered to bring these documents the moment they arrived. The man who enters the room hands a binder full of documents to the men interrogating me. While they're distracted by that for a moment, the newcomer glances at me. I feel as if I know that man from somewhere, but what was that about? What is this? As you can see, it's the report from our undercover investigation of the Kirijo. Yeah. You fool! These are not the kinds of details we asked for. This deliberation is temporarily suspended. You will be notified of our further decisions at a later date. Their sudden sourness makes me think that this case is coming to, a, to an end. But to think that someone would be able to turn in a report that would in instantly suspend an investigation from these sticklers, it would seem that there are some people even in public safety who do not respect their higher-ups. Also, that undercover investigation report must have been made by Shirogani. Huh, it seems I'm in her debt. When I leave the conference, I see that the other shadow operatives have gathered here. Mitsuru-san! What the... what are you all doing here? Uh, these guys insist Why are you dressed really like trying that? to testify in person since they failed you on the mission. I had no choice but to come too. Seeing that our friend I guess you look so good in that was immediately summoned to the government office on her return, we were worried it was a conspiracy. Indeed, as your friends, it's only natural that we'd rush to your side because we are your friends. Why are you quoting that? I guess, why are you speaking with such an over-exaggeration, and what are Yukari and Arori even doing here? Yeah, we were why are you dressed like that? You. After all, we're all your friends. 
the best of friends. Yep, yes siree. You realize I won't be able to stick up for you if they come down on you because of this. It'll be fine. Look, I'm in the middle of a shoot right now. I'm just out walking Koromaru. <laughs> I'm just going out for a run, you know? You're training, Junpei? Oh, you God. You, sooner. you got Akiko oh, all hot and bothered. Uh, no, that's okay. I mean, can't you see what we're getting at here? Seriously, all of you? I can't help but laugh with amusement. Uh, though this makes me happy. I, I feel like we should probably get Labras a suit as well. I mean, I guess she stands out as a robot girl when she's not wearing clothes in general, but Labrys really stands out. Like, like, really stands out. I can't help but laugh with amusement. Though this makes me happy as their friend, I have mixed feelings as the leader of the organization. The higher-ups... I think, you know what? This is going to be the goddamn thumbnail. But the higher-ups that gave themselves away this time are the only the tip of the iceberg. They must be many people in the police and it's in, in, in the political realm who don't think well of the Kirijo group. Uh, those troublemakers will pass immediately if we leave even the slightest vulnerability unguarded. But even then, the shadow operatives will continue to protect and serve. We won't let anyone be forced to be alone. Uh, what? We won't let anyone be forced to be alone. Uh, we can create a world where everyone will have the strength to deny the fate of destruction. Let's go. Yes! And we will continue moving towards the future for the sake of, the, of granting our wishes. Is that going to be the last one? Yeah, the end. Okay. Okay, so we're going to need to go back and do some selections. I just got to remember where the fudge they are. It's going to be credits? Yeah. Uh, Shadow Operative. It's been a while since we got an achievement. Sometimes I forget achievements are actually a thing when I play these games. Um, so yeah, okay, so we're gonna need to go back and select the solitude one for Labrys and whatever the second one was for, uh, you, and then apparently we'll be able to get the true ending or something like that. Um, I'm not sure how much many battles are gonna be left. I'm not even sure how many episodes it's actually gonna take to achieve this. I'm assuming not many. And I do want to do a Dashi story, though there might be like a... Well, actually, I don't even know if I can take... I should probably get that done as soon as can, because surprisingly, this has almost been the end of, uh... of March, right? So, April's coming around the corner, huh? So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to that sooner than later. What else? Uh, story-wise, I... I don't know, I kind of, I get why it's a separate story, right? Give other characters time to shine and, um, have, like, the newer character, Labrys, stand out a little bit on her own. That being said, I kind of wish they just did parts we didn't see in the P4 story. As the P3 story, I don't know. It was it was an all right story, Teddy. Uh, it was it was an all right story. It's about on par with P4, but I I don't know. I really just don't get the whole forgiving show that easily. And I guess he didn't kill anyone yet, so he did a lot of damage though. Like he hijacked the plane, causing trauma to people like experience wise that's something that you don't exactly get over real quickly when you're a part of a terrorist hijacking uh you stole a very well you, you kidnapped labrys right um then you threw her into a tv and caused a whole bunch of issues for you and his team and then you know you almost killed a limousine driver and you know mitsuru and her guys in the limousine crash you then kidnap them and strung them up on a cross, which is just, you know, fucked up in general. Um, the mention kept sending Shadow as us, not to, well, they said to kill us, right? 
happen. No, you didn't. No one ever died. But still, I don't know. Maybe I'm not exactly uh, the best person to <laughs> to dole out redemption and punishment, right? Because no one would ever get redemption, probably. Uh, Theodore was interesting. I guess uh, from what you guys told me, he's from the the P3 P uh, PlayStation, uh, not PlayStation 3, Persona 3 Portable Edition of the game that you can choose uh, as, uh, I guess, an alternate attendant. Um, which is, you know, it's, I guess it's good to have options, right? He seems like an interesting character, to say the least. But yeah, no, it's it's good. I just man, I don't know. Just send him to jail. Maybe maybe there'll be another story someday, right? Where uh, you know he shows up again. Maybe he'll actually have a decent redemption arc then, instead of that. That's just not how you really feel. You really want friends, type deal. So you know, stop ending the world and come join us. He didn't join us. He ran away, which is good, but still. Uh, maybe I'll be something in the future that comes up. They didn't really say anything about a Persona 5 fighting game, did they? I guess if they did, that would probably be a continuation of, like, Show's arc, maybe? I don't know if I would want that. There would have to be another P4 fighting game. To go from there. I don't know. I guess you could do P5 and Show's doing something stupid involving the Persona 5 cast. And then, like, a mixture of P4 and P3 show up. And by the time that actually happens, right? That's five years in the future from four to five. So, they'd all be pretty... The true ending. Oh, okay. I guess that's... Already available? That's interesting. Right there. Awakening. So I guess we'll get to that next time. Oh, from right there. Okay, cool. I, I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought I had to go back and do the the choices. I guess just to get the 100% the on this one, uh, we can do that choice. But we'll worry about that all next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press like and below. If you're not subscribed yet, when you have my video section, check out some of the content, see if it's to your liking. Once again, thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great day.